Welcome to Mortal Kombat! <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, today we're taking a look at a figure from Hasbro's Mortal Kombat line. Hasbro's extremely cheaply made Mortal Kombat line. Hasbro's Mortal Kombat line they put the least possible amount of effort into. So meet Raiden. This figure was released in 1994 with one original body part, his noggin. Yeah, like most toys from this line, except for Goro for obvious reasons, his body is from older G.I. Joe figures with a brand new head sculpt. They spared every expense. In this case, the body came from Ninja Force Nunchuck, though this isn't too obvious as the colors are so vastly different. That also means he gets one of the gimmicks that came with Ninja Force figures. In this case, he's got a karate chopping arm. So, is this a good likeness of Raiden? Well, the head sculpt is good, and the outfit is white, but it's a completely different martial arts outfit compared to the video game. The first one, I mean, let's not even get into later looks. It's still better than Sonya by a country mile, mind you. And he does have the iconic hat, though it isn't an accessory since it isn't removable. Well, I should say it's not meant to be removable. As a quick eBay search reveals that it can come off, but boy, that ain't pretty. You know what? It really should have been an accessory. Instead, he comes with a sword and a pair of nunchucks. I like to think this was intentional as a reference to the original body mold. Especially since a god of thunder doesn't need them or a sword. Yeah, Thor's got the whole hammer thing going on, but it's deeply ingrained in his mythos. The nunchucks, not so much. Okay, we've been staring at this guy for most of the video now, and you may have noticed something is a bit off. Yeah, the white isn't looking as pristine as it should. That's because this figure is prone to yellowing, where the plastic slowly degrades. In another decade or so, this guy is gonna look like what if Scorpion was the god of thunder. Overall, it's a pretty decent Raiden figure, but it could have been so much better if Hasbro actually put the effort in. You know, maybe make a whole new body mold? And have an appropriate accessory like a staff or something? By the way, whenever I complain about Hasbro, I'm talking about the corporate entity, not people. And even if I were to talk about people, my arrows would be pointed at middle and upper management. Nothing but respect for the poor bastard who was told, here's a bunch of body molds, try to make a Mortal Kombat figure out of it. With that, it's time to talk about the character, though I'm only gonna mention a few things that I find interesting. I mean, you could fill a book with all the stuff that happens to the guy in the games alone. There's retcons, time travel, at one point he turns evil-ish. It's 11 games and things get very convoluted. His character in the very first game is, uh, special, though. Every fighter gets three paragraphs. One in the game's introduction, two more if you beat the game with them. Look, it was an early 90s fighting game where you could rip somebody's spine out. It wasn't exactly Final Fantasy VII. Raiden is the God of Thunder who took human form to enter the tournament and is rumored to have been invited by Shang Tsung himself. If you beat the game with him, it's revealed that the other fighters and Tsung's sorcery were no match for a god. Bored by the lack of competition, he soon starts inviting other gods to compete and the resulting battles destroy the earth. Have a nice day. So yeah, that's the joke ending from Mortal Kombat 1. It isn't canon, obviously. Canonically, Liu Kang wins the first tournament. From Mortal Kombat 2 onwards, Raiden was the protector of Earth, tasked with preparing the realm's defenders for the tournament, and it's pretty much remained that way. He's still a god, but a mid-tier one, lower than the elder gods who were almost never seen and did even less. By the end of Mortal Kombat 11, he becomes an elder god himself, I think, and Liu Kang takes his place as a god of his level after time travel, and Liu Kang having died a few times. I told you this got convoluted, and that's just the games! In the first live-action movies, he was played by Christopher Lambert, until he wasn't. In all the movies, TV series, cartoons and comics, one thing has always remained consistent. He's Earthrealm's protector who guides the heroes. Unlike the games, though, he's normally not allowed to compete in Mortal Kombat himself. Because, as the first joke ending suggests, he'd be horribly overpowered. Plus, it's called Mortal Kombat. No gods allowed. I'm gonna ignore that time they crossed over with the DC Universe, just like everybody else seems to do. And that was Raiden. An okay figure and a mainstay of the Mortal Kombat games. 
In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's like the only character to be playable in all 11 main games. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing?